Okay, question number. Whoop, um, sorry, I forgot. Question number seven, part B. From Pure Mathematics 2, practice paper C. Here we have a question which is um, about proofs again. Proof, proof by counter example. Now, what does counter example mean? It means you need to find just one example which proves this statement false. One value of x which causes this whole thing to be less than zero. Okay. Now, we have to understand in order to be able to do this question something about logarithms. First of all, when you have log of something, like if I have log 5, it means log to the base 10 of 5. It's not like something's missing from there. It's just that with when you have log to the base 10, you don't need to write the 10. That's one thing. So there is a base there, which is 10. That's one thing you need to realize. And the other thing that you need to realize, which is actually really important uh, when you come to inequalities, which um, is that basically the log of a number, okay, which um, is less than, his, his magnitude is less than one, basically, it can't be negative, but if its magnitude is less than one, for example, the log of a half, okay, log to any base of a half, okay, will always be something that's negative, okay? So, for example, just to show you, log of 0 0.5 gives you a negative value. If you have log of anything that's bigger than one, even if it's 1.000001, 000001, just slightly bigger than one, it's going to be positive, okay? It will be small but positive. And the log of one, the log of one will always be zero, okay? And that's because the log curve is basically the inverse of the exponential curve. So for example, if you have the curve 10 to the power of x, it will have this type of shape. This is y equals 10 to the power of x, and it will always go through 0, 1. Now, the log curve is the inverse of this. So basically, the x and y axes swap, swap over when you're doing the inverse. So, uh, like this is really, this is like going from negative in the y on the x axis. So it's going to, the log curve is going to be coming from negative on the y axis. Okay. So also this co crosses the x axis at one. This is going to cross the y axis at one. Okay. And so the log to the base 10 curve will look something like this. Okay. This is going to be the log. This is going to be the log to the base 10. Of x okay this is y equals log to the base 10 of x it's the inverse of y equals 10 to the power of x so you can see even if it was 2 to the power of x 3 to the power of x 4 to the power it doesn't matter we'll have that same shape and it will go through 0 1 here and this will go through 1 0 here so you can see okay that as long if the value of x if the value of x is less than 1 Okay, if it's less than one, it can't be. It can't be zero. This will never touch a zero. It can't be negative. Okay, it's undefined. But if it's less than one, if it's a fraction that's less than one, so if it's between anywhere between zero and just under one, then the log of that number is going to be a negative value. So this will be negative as long as three x squared plus five x plus three is less than 1. So if 3x squared plus 5x plus 3 is less than 1, if the value of this thing that you take the log of is less than 1, then this statement will be false. So we have to try to find a value of x which causes this expression to be less than 1. Okay, any value of x which causes this expression to be less than 1 Okay, we'll prove this value to this this to be false and we'll have to show taking that particular value or a value um, of x and we have to show that it that's being that it causes it to be false. That's what it means by proof by counter example. Find one example. Okay, now so we have to basically solve the inequality 3x squared plus 5x plus 3 is less than 1. And that inequality is the same as 3x squared 
plus 5x plus 2 is less than 0. So let's so solve this quadratic inequality. So let's find, first of all, uh, there's actually two ways of doing this, really. One is uh, by completing the square, which you could do, and, and show that its vertex goes below 0. But let's just do it the, the normal way, solving quadratic inequality. So first we want to find the critical values. Okay, so we want to first find where does it equal zero. So we've got 3x squared plus 5x plus 2 is equal to zero. So we have to solve this. So I'm going to factorize. Okay, so I'm going to set up my little window method. So 3x squared goes here and 2 goes here. I have to find two numbers multiplied to give me 5x squared. So the product is 5x squared and the sum is uh, sorry, 5x squared, the 6x squared, two numbers multiplied to give me 6x squared, 3 times 2 is 6 of course, and the sum is 5x. Okay, so 3 times 2 is five, uh, 6 and 3 plus 2 is 5, so it's going to be 3x and 2x, both of them positive. Okay, so now I'm going to take out the common factor here, which is just x, and here, which is 3x x times something gives me 2x, x times plus 2 gives me 2x, and 3x times something gives me 3x, x times 3x times plus 1 gives me 3x. And just checking this, these two multiply to give that 2, they do. So this factorizes to become 3x plus 2 times um, x plus 1 equals 0. So the critical values where this actually equals 0 is when x equals minus two thirds and when x is equal to uh, minus one okay x equals minus two thirds and x equals minus one is when this actually equals zero so let's make a little sketch we see that it's a smiley face because a is greater than zero so we've got a smiley face okay and we see that it crosses the x-axis i'm gonna try to be a bit neater than this and using a ruler is, is, is wise for you lot too, even though it's just a sketch. Okay, um, that's my x-axis, that's my y-axis, it's just a sketch, but we know that it crosses the x-axis at minus one and at minus two-thirds. So let me make a bit more space. Minus one and minus two-thirds. Okay, so something like that, it's just a sketch. So it comes down and it also crosses at two somewhere over here. So it's like it comes down and it for a very brief period, it goes below the x-axis. It comes up and so we can see in this region here between minus one, okay, and x is between minus one and minus two thirds, we're gonna find a value of x which causes this to become less than zero if it makes this less than zero okay if it makes this less than zero then it makes this less than one because this follows on from there and if it makes this less than one then it makes this thing something which is a fraction which will give us a negative value and it will prove this statement to be false so we just got to find any value between minus one and minus two thirds. So let's think about this. This is like minus three thirds, and this is like minus two thirds. Oh, let's choose a value that's halfway between them. Let's multiply the, let's uh, change them over six. This is minus uh, six over six, and this is minus five over six. Uh, sorry, minus five over six, minus four over six. I'm jumping ahead of myself there. This is minus 4 over 6. So we can say when x equals minus 5 over 6, it's going to be um, somewhere exactly halfway between them. That will be this value here. Okay, so now we're going to take x equals 5 minus 5 over 6 and substitute it into our um, statement here. So we've got log 3x squared plus 5x plus 3. Log the log of 3x squared plus 5x plus 3 
and we're going to put into here x equals negative 5 over 6. So let's see what happens. So we've got log. We've got 3 times negative 5 over 6 squared plus 5 times negative 5 over 6 plus 3. And let us see what happens when we substitute these into our calculator. So we got log bracket 3 we can, oops, we've already got bracket there um, log 3 bracket minus let me do it this way minus 5 over 6 ok and plus that squared, sorry squared and then we've got plus 5 times, so 5 bracket um, minus fraction 5 over 6, close that bracket, plus 3, close the bracket for the log, and let's just check we have put everything in correctly, minus 5 over 6, well, 3 times minus 5 over 6 squared, plus 5 times minus 5 over 6, plus 3, and if we've done everything right, then this should give us a negative value and it does good so that gives us minus 0 0.03779 minus 0 0.03779 okay yep yeah. so we can say therefore the statement that the log it's always good in the end to write the statement that the log of 3x squared plus 5x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0 for all x values is proved wrong okay by the counter example you should always put a statement in these proof questions at the end the counter example x equals minus 5 over 6 we could have chosen any value between these two values for example even minus 0 0.75 would have worked. If you got minus 5 over 6, so you got 5 divided by 6, that gives you, yeah, uh, minus 0 0.75, that's, yeah, minus 0 0.75, we could have used my x equals minus 0 0.75, any value that's between these two. I could have used minus 0 0.9, I could have used minus 0 0.8, I could use numbers maybe which would be easier than using the fraction. Probably been more sensible for me to use minus 0 0.9. Okay, um, something like that. And you put that into the into what they gave you and you prove that it proves it wrong. Okay, so that's proof or disproof by counterexample. So we proved by counterexample that this statement is a false statement. It's not true for all real values of x. Okay, so I hope that was clear.